Hey, so I decided to do a video with a little more detail, uh, following up on a video I had done before showing that I had a project where I took an old 80s boombox that wasn't working and actually converted into a new Bluetooth boombox. So we started with just essentially a old school um, cassette boombox that in this case wasn't functioning properly. And then I used the Insma, I guess that's how you say it, but a digital amp board that is off Amazon. So the one thing I wanted to show is that I actually soldered on poorly a uh, extension to the antenna that's built in. It actually helps a lot. So use a 12 volt uh, rechargeable lithium ion power supply. And then I did put in new speakers purely for the fact that a lot of the ones I take out are, um, you know, like 2 watt and weird uh, impedance and don't always match kind of what I'm putting back in. So. Uh, to get started, essentially, it's as easy as just taking all the screws that hold the case together apart, pulling out anything that is able to come out, and um, trying to salvage then all the screws and knobs so that when we put it back together, once we put the take all the components out of it and then put the Bluetooth kind of components inside, that it looks the same. So there's a lot of components in there that um, I just take out and save just for purely the fact that maybe someday I can use something off of them. So um, make sure that anything that has knobs on it, like the cassette player has the um, the playback buttons on it, kind of affixed to it that you keep everything so that you can come back and get those buttons off. Because the goal is to basically make the stereo boombox look the exact same as it did before. So a lot of the wires have to be cut, and then there's some screws usually that hold um, the kind of circuit boards or whatever they are inside, and yeah, pretty easy though. Once you get all the screws out, usually everything kind of falls out, and then I usually also do replace the speakers, again, just because a lot of times the speakers are deteriorated, some of them are ripped. I've done quite a few of these different boom boxes before, every one usually is different, but I always just typically replace the speakers, so um, fairly inexpensive to get a set of kind of full range kind of car stereo type replacement speakers that are rated for the at least the wattage that that amp board can theoretically put out. So the last time I used hot glue for affixing a lot of the components inside and that's something that I wanted to come back to because it does work well until apparently you leave it in your hot car and the hot glue remelts because there are times where the screw holes don't line up. In this case, I could only get two of them in, but it is important to use mechanical fasteners to affix as much as you can. I did go ahead and still use hot glue for a lot of the buttons, but that's something that um, I think I will in the future and I'm actually already going back and replacing some of the buttons with um, better type of permanent adhesive because just like those speakers that when it gets hot enough and the hot glue is actually able to remelt, I've had those buttons essentially melt off. So I am using hot glue. It's the easy way to kind of at least get stuff started, um, but I'm going to come back on some of these and redo it. Now I mentioned earlier that you need to save the components that have any buttons affixed. Sometimes these can be a pain in the butt, but they are able to come off the cassette player and then re-glue those back together so that they essentially take on the same shape and um, appearance that they had when they were hooked up originally. So we glue those together and then it is a little bit tricky. I use a lot of times tape to to at least hold stuff in temporarily and then more hot glue but to hold essentially those buttons where they were. And once those are kind of affixed I try and uh, keep the tape deck door from opening with some more hot glue. Again going back next time I do one of these I'm going to use more of a permanent adhesive like a clear adhesive that I actually do use on this amp board to secure it so that it doesn't again melt um, and kind of fall off from where I place it. So I use a, just a clear adhesive on this case. I think you could probably use a range of things. The reality is it just has to be able to uh, keep pretty lightweight components from moving. So, and then once the board's down, it's just a matter of hooking up the speakers to this little amp board. The 
wiring diagram, just in case you don't have it in front of you and you're doing one of these, is positive on each of the outside posts for those. So um, they go in pairs, but the positives on the outside, I just try and glue down a little bit of the wire so it's not floating around too much in there and then try and affix that little um, additional antenna I put on the Bluetooth. A lot of times when I do put the case back on, it won't go on flush because the speakers that I put in are bigger than the ones I take out. And that is something that is common on every one I've done. Essentially what I do is mark wherever the case is hitting the speakers or whatever other components and then just use my little oscillating tool to cut out. Sometimes it's cutting out the screw post, sometimes just part of the plastic battery case like in this case. So once you cut that out, you can figure out how to make it go on flush. Now just the battery is wired to the board and I'm going to show you something else I did after the fact on this one. This is actually a photo of a modification I made to this boom box after I filmed this video. If you look at the left side there, I wired in a just a toggle switch that allows me to bypass having to actually control the power through the battery itself. So I go from the battery to that toggle switch to the amp board. All right, now that it's all complete, I can show you that basically turn on the power button that I put on the side. It will turn the Bluetooth amp board on and if you've already connected once, it will automatically connect. So it worked out pretty well. You can see that it's really easy to turn on, connect to. When you're done, instead of having to uh, do anything in the back, you can just flip the switch on the side. So there it is. Hope you enjoyed the project. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. I've done probably about 15 of these different uh, stereo upgrades, and it's always a lot of fun. Some are a little bit trickier than others, but in general, it's just great to be able to repurpose something that is not working. I've actually upgraded even this one that's showing with a crossover, so you actually improve the sound quality. You can put four speakers in. You can do whatever you want, really. It's just a lot of fun to have a uh, classic look, but also the convenience of the Bluetooth and a nice sound and be able to enjoy it wherever you are. So good luck if you're doing it yourself.